Hello, <laughs> we're back. Okay, so um, welcome to the Vanessa Ashcroft do as I say, not as I do tutorial on we're going to make a big painting. So hopefully all of you have got your background, whether it be these colours or your own colours. Uh, you've downloaded or printed off your, or you have on your iPad, you've got your um, three images, which we've got to use and uh, you've got your paints. Now, if you don't, don't panic, you can always look at this later and just do it at your own pace. So the idea is that we are going to um, create a large work that using lights and darks, and we're really going to look, look at the images. And so not just one image, we're going to choose from the three images, right? So that means that you've got more options to put a mark and shape on the painting. So I've got mine quite large. I've left the bottom bit white because that's how I'm painting at the moment. And I, yeah, I've already got sort of a bit of landscape here, which is just by chance, because I was just whacking it out of the um, paint pot. So what I'm gonna do, I've got the three paintings that I'll show you, and I'll put that on the video, that two paintings that I've already done that are actually on a limited palette with um, the images that you've got downloaded, all right? And that will give you an idea. So the thing is we also need is charcoal and I've got willow charcoal or you can use a, a Conti, which is a hard chalk, or you can use a pastel, you can use an oil pastel, anything you like. And what we're gonna do is use the images and we're going to uh, just draw. Now, when the thing is when you draw, you tend to think, oh, that's a rock, and then you're just doing what you think in your head. You really just need to look at your images, right? Really look closely at um, the rock, the light, the dark, and just draw the shapes in. So we're gonna be quite, um, quite bold because it's big, right? I find it a lot easier, as I've said, to do a large painting than to do a small one. All right, so I'm going to upload now the two images that I've already done, and then we're going to work on putting the putting the work um, on the canvas, and not the the images the the, the drawing first, okay? And so I've got my pictures, this one and these ones, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw aspects. So this bit here I'm going to use for the foreground down the bottom here. And for this bit here, I'm going to use aspects of it, of the image, the rocks I love, and also the tree in the middle, which is this one here, tree here. And then on this one, it's an overall, I like these rocks and the light here. I don't know, it'll just evolve, all right? So I'm going to draw it quickly. I've got the, I've got a charcoal. Thing is, don't go too crazy with the charcoal because what happens is, you end up with a black charcoal unless you fix it. You can fix it with a hairspray or with a um, with a fixative. But don't go crazy. It's just a guideline. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw draw with the charcoal and create the image to get my get a guideline. Okay. So I'm just going to go this on fast forward and then you can see what I'm going to do. So now I've just got the basic shapes in, and if you, as you can see, not a masterpiece yet. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use the limited palette. So the one I've given you is actually um, foolproof, and what we can, we're still going to rely on this all the time. But so what we're thinking of is shapes rather than that's a rock, that's a tree, that's a this. Okay, so it's just looking at shapes. So I've used this one to start with, and then. I'm going to come in later and get some more rocks and things like that. And this is the foreground. Now the foreground, I love these. If you look close into rock pools and things like that, you, it's reflections and all these little tiny, tiny little lines and marks in here for a stick and a reason to put a mark. Okay, so I'm gonna just get the palette going and we're gonna put some, apply some paint. So I use bits of cardboard at the moment because I've got so many canvases arriving by cardboard and I thought oh, well, why don't I just use that so uh, what is a really good exercise if you don't you haven't used to do, done a lot of painting is to practice doing different um, limited palettes 
and then on a sheet of paper, whatever, try how many different tones and darks and lights of different colors. You know when you go to Bunnings and they've got a pot this big and they're making a particular color and there's one drop that goes in. That is how crucial different paint mixing is, okay? So we've only got a limited palette, so you can't stuff it up. So my, one of my favorites is, um, so it's Payne's Gray and Yellow Ochre, or Yellow Oxide, whatever, okay? Now you think, well, that's gonna make blue and bluey gray and yellow is gonna make green, sure, but it also makes amazing grays and tones. So uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm and I'd use a lot of white, look, that's how much white I use, all right? So that's what you need, a lot of white. So now, if you, for those of you who aren't into painting normally, you've got a piece of wood from Bunnings, you've got paint from Bunnings, which is the, um, pots of colour, no different, all right? We're just gonna draw on, draw on the canvas and we're gonna put the darks and lights and things like that in line and using different fun things to make a bloody masterpiece. Okay, hang on. So I've got my palette and I'm going to mix up the greens and, uh, not the green, the pans gray, yellow oxide and white to start with. I tend to like a palette knife because you can't get too precious. So I'm just going to, where's the bloody, okay. Here's the picture. Always refer to the picture. It's amazing how many times people go, they're paint, 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 paint. Where's the picture? Oh, I don't know, hang on, I'll find it. No, you should be referring to this all the time. Just makes your life easier. So if you see here where the really dark area is, I'm gonna do those. So, and I'll put it on with a palette knife and it's not too precious. And you, what's good is you can come back and cut back in again. So look, see, not precious, just shapes. Get new paint on the, and I'm only doing the darks with plain, which you shouldn't do. And look at that, see now that little bit coming in there, I'm gonna keep that. Just leave it there, you don't have to fill it all in. Don't have to be too now what I like to do, the idea of painting is to make it look not laboured. Okay, and that's with the spatula. Anytime I'm finding I'm really a bit stuffed, it's uh, stuffed, well I'm usually stuffed, um, slack, no, stuck. Oh, okay, when anytime I'm stuck, uh, I get the palette knife out, I choose my favourite, um, I choose my favourite limited palette, and I go from there and it does make it a lot better. So now see with a palette knife, by rubbing it gently, right, we've got these lovely effect coming through. And because you've painted the palette, the, um, the canvas, these colors, these little flashes will come through. Now it doesn't mean you're gonna keep them all over the place, keep them, but you might. So that's why I just leave it you always come back. So now my charcoal is in the paint. All right. So I'm just doing the darks, as I said. Dark, 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 and the rocks will come out. And I'm just giving myself a guideline. So look at this. This is this is how I'm going to show you all my tricks. See this? Can you see that? Love that. Love that with the palette knife. And that's caught on the paintings at the back. Okay. So, I'll just continue here, I'm not trying too hard. Where the rock hits the, where the rock hits the sand, that's where you make it quite solid. And then from there, you can just do a slight, do a light drag down of the palette knife, okay? Um, and it's nice, don't try and tidy up the, pa um, the thick paint because it's all the ridges and things, when you come back with a dry brush or you come back with other paint, you'll leave that bit in. So this is not, this is how it, this is how it goes quickly, all right? Uh, but this is only the beginning. And so if you don't get too twee, don't get too, oh my God, I love it so much, I don't wanna wreck it. Don't think that, all right? So I'll put in the darks here. I might put a few more darks in, because I, 
The good thing about acrylic paint is it dries quickly and we can go and have a coffee and come back and do more or we can just keep paint. So see it's catching here on this bit here of raised paint and and this is why you do the charcoal because I've got already got the rock see the rock shapes are popping out now didn't take long did it <laughs> okay and just a little bit more and we've got the rocks we've got the sand happening here now the rocks have come out a bit and while I've got this paint on that I showed you this greeny color okay I'm going to just drag that across so I don't waste it before it dries I'm just going to drag it on it's all about the layers if you've only got one layer of paint on one layer of materials or whatever for it you need to have lots of different layers okay so I'm just dragging that on while I'm got the paint on the palette okay lots of white lots of white oh shit cardboard okay so here I go this is two colors right two colors and then the pink background so you don't have to think once you start thinking oh no how am I going to fix it I'm gonna oh I'll get I like that color in my paint box I like that color in my paint box you're stuck it's like going and having a black and white leopard print room and then think someone gives you a pink or a bright red cushion you think oh shit how's that gonna work or a green or something and you think oh, I'll just whack it there I do love the cushion but it'll ruin the painting so ruin the decor so here I've got different colors coming up now and look at this lovely green and that's just with that yellow oxide with a touch of the blue so what I'm going to do is these do dry darker okay god I'm bloody close okay and okay what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to paint the rocks now again keep it with the spatula you can do it with a paintbrush but as soon as you do it with a paintbrush you get tight so look all I'm doing filling in that shape and as you know with rocks I'm not looking at the book because I've seen that book I've seen the picture I know what it looks like I actually live in Katonga where the picture was taken okay so these are the different tones you can get I'll get some more paint now I've got a darker color oh no a bit dark okay. so I'm just doing the rocks don't know what happened there now in the rocks we're just layering it okay they're darker on the bottom right and you have notice that they're lighter on the top with the lights catching so you might just with your palette just put a little bit of light on the top and with your palette knife just we're mass producing we're, we're doing this because it's a no no fail okay so Vanessa don't try and complicate things put the darker color on the bottom with your palette knife okay dragging along and little bits this is why you paint the color on the background it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if you've got um, it doesn't matter if you've got a bit of pink coming through but it does matter if you've got the white coming through because then that looks like you're lazy all right so I'm putting quite a lot of paint on this because when it dries I'm going to be dry brushing and catching on all the cracks okay so I'll keep going because my battery will run out and I don't want to bugger it up and be able to download so I'm going to get here a lot of white paint and just a touch of the yellow and I'm just going to create the sand get rid of this pink here so with just a touch of the yellow oxide make a light sand color and I'm just going to cut that in and bring that rock forward see how it's not precious once you start sticking your tongue out and putting your um, 